Jewel tones. They're not just for your fingers and your earlobes and wherever else you want to put your gems. They're also for your kitchen cabinets. Of course, jewel tones are a category of colors that are rich in saturation, deeply vibrant, sometimes moody and a bit shaded. And according to Architectural Digest, moving forward into 2023 and beyond, we are going crazy. We're going nuts for these jewel tones in our kitchens, specifically on the cabinets themselves. I wanna go through some of these with you today. These are all by different design companies that are affiliated with Architectural Digest. So some pretty prominent, prestigious people in the industry. And spoiler alert, you will notice a bit of a trend with a lot of these colors, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. And just as a little side note, I'm gonna focus mainly on the paint colors because of course, we're the paint people, all about painting and decorating on this channel, and that's what we're gonna really hone in on today. The first example is from Bethany Adams Interiors, and it's a great kitchen. I don't wanna say basic, but it is a trend we see quite often in terms of navy blue and then some natural woods and some lighter countertops. I do like the backsplash at the back of the kitchen, and honestly, I think the wood that's being used here, it is bringing in some lovely natural warmth, almost a honey golden color. Although we do see some mixed materials. Uh, we got some yellowy goldy handles and poles, and then the faucet is sort of a different color. It looks like a matte black by the looks of it. That I don't mind. I think mixing materials and metals is fine when you have mostly one color and then an accent or two of another. Next up is Michael a deuce? Let's call him Mike. I hope Michael's not watching. <laughs> so here we have a much more vibrant blue. I wouldn't even call this so much a navy blue. There's a little bit of a green undertone that warms it up slightly, and there's no natural wood to offset it. It's essentially top and bottom the same color, although the door is a little more of a navy blue. It almost looks purple, but what you will notice for sure is the sheen. These are very shiny, glossy finishes, which I do think gives a bit of an upscale sort of feel and vibe. High gloss is often a finish that's associated with factory finish, lacquer coatings, not something that you could just brush on. So there is a very finished look to it. And yes, we do have a lot of that gold again, which kind of iffy on, but it suits it, I suppose. Great floors though, herringbone. Still cool. Now we're getting something really interesting with this third example by Chust and Co. Chused, Chused. I guess there's so many interior designers and decorators these days that it's really hard to find a name that isn't taken. So we got some peculiar ones. But what's cool about this one is another high gloss finish. And there is sort of an off-white theme going, but what we definitely see is a high gloss burgundy. Really interesting. It's not a vibrant red. It's not a terracotta orange. It has this mix between red and brown, like a classic burgundy. And apparently this is like a signature for this designer, which I think is really cool. And even the, the stove, the range, it has an old school aesthetic to it. I really like this. This one really speaks to me. Avery Cox design is the next one up and we have another kind of bluey color here. This one is Inchira Blue by Ferron Ball, apparently, which is one of my favorite blues. It has a little bit of a green feel too. And as you can probably tell, this isn't your standard navy blue. It has a green element to it. Not the same green undertone we saw earlier, which was almost like an electrifying kind of warmth. This one does feel a little closer to a true dark teal, a much more balanced approach to blue and green combined. This is also a paint color that essentially inspired what I picked for my bedroom. So I really like this color. Just be mindful that if you're going with something like this, it's probably gonna look a little more blue or a little more green, depending on your space and your lighting. Just be careful with that. Also really fun stools. Rust and fuchsia, very quirky choice. I really like it. Now next up we have Yorktown green, and this is another kitchen that is using kind of that greeny color. To be honest, Yorktown green by Benjamin Moore in actuality has some blue, but in this example here, it looks a little closer to like an earthy hunter green. Doesn't really have a lot of that blue. But like I said, if you test your colors, you'll know what aspect of it will be more pronounced in your space. I do like the baby Persian rugs that bring in some kind of pinky redness, which is nice. Very complimentary to green if you look at the color wheel, but it's nothing too vibrant and eye-catching. It's not a super vibrant blood red or anything. It has softness to it. So it's almost split complimentary, not directly complimentary. And another trend, all the gold accents. I guess Architectural Digest thinks that gold is best. 
in every circumstance. Next up, ah, oh, look what we have here, another blue. So yeah, deep blue cabinets, kind of a smoky navy. The difference here is you don't have, you know, a nice warm wood, hardwood flooring. It's made out of wood, but it's more of an ebony. So it's a darker wood. It looks very cold, just like the blue. Almost a monochromatic approach to coloration because it's cool on cool sort of paired together, but you know, they're slightly different. They're different enough at least to distinguish, obviously texturally, but also it's kind of like slate gray and navy blue sort of side by side, a little more subtle. But the top half of the kitchen, you got this beautiful like Dalmatian looking backsplash. <laughs> and then your slightly warmer creamy off white to bring in some warmth with these really fun lights, these brass lights just sort of reflecting off of that wall to act as a light source itself. Are you noticing a trend with at least some of these? That trend's gonna go out the door with this next one. Wow. So when I first saw this picture, I thought that was like a Coco Bolo, like wooden island. Can we do a Coco Bolo? It's not, it's red marble. So really, really cool. Extremely maximalist approach here because even though it is pretty open concept and feels pretty airy, Clearly you have mixed materials, different colors, just working together. And what's interesting is this green sort of box that they've custom made, another high gloss finish. So we're seeing this pattern, definitely a lot of gold. It's technically brass at the back, but that gold yellow metallic look, very, very popular. But it's really interesting how that contained green aspect of the kitchen looks like a separate piece, like it's its own little thing just sort of plopped into the kitchen. I think it's really fun. And based on that little sliver on the right of the next room, pretty minimalist looking setup as well. Off whites, not a ton of clutter it looks like. So this kitchen really becomes the showpiece of the space, which I think is perfect. Very different. Although maintaining those brass cabinets is probably a disaster. <laughs> okay, no offense to Prospect Refuge Studio, but when you describe a color as medical green, maybe uh, I'll pass on that. I like turquoise, I like robin's egg blue. Like I love those types of colors, but this sort of arrangement, I think it's a bit too Colgate toothpaste. It's a bit too scrubs. And then you have this sort of red burgundy, kind of a mid-century feel, right? Like a 70s sort of aesthetic. You got some of that red laminate on the top of the countertop or the island. And then, I don't know, I just <laughs> I have trouble justifying this. It is fun. Did I come back here for some fun? It's quirky. If it suits your aesthetic, that's great. Doesn't suit mine. Next up is Olivia's song. And this is actually a little picture of her own kitchen. A bit of a humble brag because there's a beautiful view with these big old windows showing this wonderful tree. We don't see a ton of the kitchen though. I mean, we can see the tiles, but what we do see is a bit of a deep blue, navy blue again. Cool ceiling though. I bet those wood planks are really good for acoustics in your kitchen. <laughs> now this one I think is really fun, mainly because of this beautiful black framing in the front. I'm unsure if there's glass panels there or it's just kind of empty. And I think the main standout is the inset blood red, for lack of a better term, in the middle. And then of course, framed by the white oak on the cabinet. Not really the color that I would think of using immediately. That's why I don't work for this company because they have their own ideas. I guess the chairs, there is a bit of a red undertone in that wood, although it's a completely different type of wood. I still think it works. What I do like about this and it's not totally obvious when you first see it, it's the ceiling in the kitchen, which is actually maybe a high gloss. Looks like a high gloss ceiling. Again, it depends on whether that's the reflection on the glass on the front or that's the ceiling itself. If it is the ceiling, I think that's fun. That just adds a whole other element that can really be very intriguing in an area like a, a kitchen or a dining room. And then we got white arrow, which is, wouldn't you know? <laughs> Another kind of navy blue, sort of teal color. They're using a color from Fine Paints of Europe. So very deep color, really rich, a bit of wood. So in 2023, with the exception of some burgundies and some reds and some disgusting greens, navy blue still seems to be very popular. And I think the colors themselves can stand the test of time, it looks like. It's just how you put everything together, how you accessorize it. But I would really urge you to explore other color options as well. 
with your kitchen cabinets. And explore doesn't mean you must use different colors. Maybe you like navy, maybe you like white cabinets, but just know that there's other options out there. If you've made it this far into the video, you can support us other than subscribing and liking the video, you can click that join button and become a monthly channel member because we do rely on viewers like you to keep us going full time. We wanna do this forever. This is truly the dream career and I couldn't thank you all enough. As a token of my gratitude, here's another video just for you.